Looking for something to do with that ground beef in your freezer? You've come to the right place. Today I'm sharing our top 10 new ground beef recipes that we've made so far this year. All of these were new to us recipes when we first made them and they all became family favorites. Up first, we have Southwestern meatloaf. Tonight I'm making a Southwestern meatloaf with black beans and rice on the side. First, we're gonna get the meatloaf in the oven, of course. We need some finely crushed tortilla chips. I'm gonna use my little food chopper here. We need about one cup, so I'm just gonna try to eyeball here. Okay, we're gonna do about that much again because that was just about half a cup there. So we've got the crushed tortilla chips in there. We're gonna put in two teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of pepper. We're gonna use our peppercorn method here. I'm just gonna eyeball half a teaspoon. Okay. Now we need two cups of salsa. I just had this medium restaurant style salsa here. If I can get it open. We're using this whole jar at 16 ounces. Adding some salt and we're gonna mix all this together. We're gonna shake in just a little bit of this chipotle chili pepper powder. Now we add the ground beef. I have a little over two pounds here. Okay, we need two eggs. The last thing we add is cheese, and I'm just using this four state cheddar, Wisconsin sharp, New York sharp, California mild, and Vermont sharp cheddar cheeses. I think I need a little bit more in here. That wasn't quite two cups. There we go. Now you can add more stuff here if you want to. You could add onion, I think a can of drained rotel would be good. Whatever you want to add, some bell peppers. I think this baked with love pan will be big enough. If not, no big deal. We'll switch it out real quick. Okay, that's it for now. It's going in the oven for 50 minutes and in about 45 minutes or so, we'll prepare the topping and then we'll put that on and it goes back in for 15 to 20 more minutes. All right, 50 minutes is up. We're gonna make the topping now. We need about half a cup of ketchup, the juice of half of a lime. I'm just gonna squeeze this by hand, a little bit of salt, and we're gonna use a little bit of this chili lime rub. Not a lot, because we put the lime juice in there. I just wanna put just a little, about half a teaspoon, and a teaspoon of brown sugar. All right, we're gonna spread this on top of the meatloaf, and then it's going back in for 20 more minutes. It tastes like a taco it's in like meatloaf taco. form. In meatloaf really form. Mm -hmm. It is good, yeah. Next we have a beefy shells and cheese skillet. So for this one, we're starting out with some ground beef, a pepper, and an onion. We're gonna cook all of that together, and then when it's done, we're just gonna drain it, add a little bit of salt and pepper. While that's cooking, we're also cooking the shells and cheese. I already have it done there, so I'm mixing in the cheese. That's it, it's kinda like, you know, Hamburger Helper, only not Hamburger Helper and great, because with the Velveeta shells and cheese, it's wonderful. <laughs> Now, you don't have to put anything on top, but I have a few pieces of this sliced Gouda 
You can also shred some cheese and put on there, whatever you want to do. But we really love this Gouda, so we're going to put that on there. We'll put them on top. We're just going to sit the top on to let that melt. Hey, Mama. Uh, Why are you looking for? I'm looking for the top to my pot. I can find it for you. You can? Yeah. I'm a good top finder. Well, that's what I need, a good top finder. <laughs> I am. I found it. Oh, I found it. Where? Right here. That's it. We'll just let that cheese melt and we'll be ready to eat. Alright, next up we have Smokehouse Chili. This, y'all, was some of the best chili we have ever had, and we've had a lot of chili. This was probably the best. I'm gonna go ahead and get some chili started. I think I'm gonna put it in the slow cooker because it's pretty much done when I get it done here. Putting it in the slow cooker for just a couple of hours just, you know, gets it hot and then it'll keep it on warm. That way I don't have to worry about coming over here and stirring it on the stove top a lot or anything like that and it won't heat the house up as much. So I have three pounds of ground beef in here. We're making a lot of chili. I'm going to add in some bacon. This is smokehouse chili. It's kind of like the Smoky Mountain chili. A little bit different, but it definitely still tastes like something you would get at a restaurant in the mountains. It's smoky, a little bit spicy just a hint of sweetness. Okay, we're gonna put in an onion and a green bell pepper too. I actually already have some cut up, and I think it'll be enough. We're gonna add those in here, and I'm gonna mince some garlic. They're actually a little bit frozen. I had them on the top shelf and pushed to the back a little bit. I need to get my apron, because I'm already making a mess. When Titus gets home, if he gets here in time today, we're gonna put our hay bales and pumpkins out in the yard somewhere. Oh, it's already smelling smoky. This was applewood smoked bacon. I forgot to tell you that. We're also going to make a sweet potato pie for tonight, y'all. I need to go ahead and get that started, too. All right, we got the slow cooker brought over. I went ahead and sprayed it with some cooking spray. We're going to go ahead and put all the other ingredients in here, and then when the meat mixture gets done, we'll just add it in. I'm going to go ahead and put the garlic in over here. So we're going to put in three cans of tomato sauce. Now we're going to put in two cans of diced tomatoes. And we're only going to put one can of the kidney beans. We don't like a lot of beans in our chili, especially not for hot dogs. We don't put any beans in hot dog chili, but regular chili. We like a little bit of beans, but we're only going to put one can. And I used to put pinto beans sometimes because for a long time we liked having pintos instead of kidney beans. So if you don't like kidney beans in chili, if you would like to have some beans, just substitute for pintos. Or black beans. Some people do black bean chili. Okay, we'll get that mixed together. Okay, so we put in two teaspoons of chipotle chili powder. Now I'm putting in a tablespoon and a half of just regular chili powder. You can use all regular if you want to. Now we're shaking in about half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Two teaspoons of ground mustard. I'm just going to have to take this top off. There we go and one tablespoon of brown sugar. And that's it, when the ground beef and bacon gets done over here, we're gonna drain it, and we'll just drain it as we add it in. y'all this chili was amazing also if you want to see the sweet potato pie recipe I'm gonna have all of these videos linked down below and now we're making fried spaghetti
All right, y'all, we've been back inside for a little bit. I wanted to keep on sitting out there on that porch, but I know these boys are gonna be coming home hungry in a minute, so we're gonna go ahead and make this fried spaghetti. I already cooked up the pasta. When we came back in, I just went ahead and started it over here, so it's ready. Now we're gonna cook the ground beef. I have two and a half pounds here, and I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping up an onion and some garlic. Then we'll shred some mozzarella cheese. Now this is gonna be a homemade sauce in here. If I had jarred pasta sauce, uh, I would totally use that this time, y'all, but I don't have any, so we're going with the homemade. So yeah, I'm just gonna chop up this small onion and this garlic, and then we'll add it right over in here with the ground beef. Now, I might have to use two skillets because this one might get too full, so I have my smaller one if I need it. I'm also gonna make some garlic bread. Uh, and I did look at the recipe and it did say crispy, y'all. It said crispy yet tender noodles. There's the onion. And it's kind of like a one skillet dish besides you have to go ahead and cook up the pasta. Other than that, everything, we're gonna make the sauce and all in this skillet with the ground beef. So it's almost a one pan supper. So we're just gonna cook this until the ground beef is done. Then we'll drain it and start adding in the stuff for the sauce. While this is finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and shred the mozzarella. And I need to preheat the oven to 350. Alright, so I got the ground beef drained. Now we're going to start adding in the seasonings. We need one teaspoon of dried parsley flakes, one teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon of dried basil. I don't have any dried, so I'm just going to put in a little bit of fresh basil real quick because I have my little basil plant over here. Oh, that smells so good. I love basil, y'all. There we go. A pinch of red pepper flakes. I'm just going to shake a few in there. Some salt and pepper. I'm doing like half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of pepper, just a little shake of paprika. All right, I'm gonna mix this all together. Then we're gonna start adding the tomato sauce. I'm gonna make the meat and sauce mixture first, and then when we get ready to add the noodles, I'm probably gonna have to get that other little skillet too, and we'll just have two of them. I'm gonna start with four cans of tomato sauce, and we'll see if we need a little more. Or actually, I'm gonna mix in three first, and we'll, we'll see if we even need that fourth can. We're gonna put in one can of diced tomatoes. Oh yeah, so see, as you can already tell, we're definitely gonna have to have that other skillet because I can't even fit any noodles in here right now. I'm gonna turn it up to medium. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this into the smaller skillet. Now we're gonna put in some of the spaghetti. You can see we're already coming back up to a simmer here. And we're gonna let it start frying on the bottom. Then I'll mix it around a little bit, try to flip it as much as possible. Let it do a little frying there. Then we top it with Parmesan and the mozzarella cheese that we shredded and it goes in the oven for just 10 minutes at 350. I don't think we need that other can of tomato sauce. It's pretty moist. Yeah, I think we're good.
Okay, y'all. Titus and Jacob and Tyler are still not home yet, but this is great. It tastes oh, like yeah. a spaghetti. Yep, we are home. It tastes like a spaghetti that I had from somewhere years ago, and I've never been able to recreate that spaghetti, but this is it. Number five, Oklahoma onion burgers. Um, excuse me, sir. I'm gonna need to use the black stone, okay? What does he do? Oh, I see what he does. Rawr! Have you been jumping right? Yeah. Some may be wondering what happened to spring. It turned back into winter and took his voice away. <laughs> anyway, here's what we're making. Titus stopped by the store on his way back home and found some reduced for quick sale meat. I said, have you been watching my grocery hauls and found out how to get good deals on meat? And he shook his head for no. No, I'm just kidding. He said no to me, but his voice sounds rough. So what we're making are some, what did Kent call them? Oklahoma onion burgers? Is that what they're called? Yes, okay. <laughs> Some of it is ground, this is ground sirloin. We need French onion dip and mustard and Worcestershire sauce for the sauce. So we'll mix that up here in a minute. We're gonna go ahead and start these on the blackstone. You need lots and lots of onions. So he chopped up four. I'm gonna make the patties since he's not feeling the best. That's nice, ain't it? He's shaking his head for you. All right, let me get a little thing I can put them on. It did get pretty cool on us again, y'all. Hopefully it's just for a little bit though. First, actual first day of spring, it isn't too far away now, I don't think. Oh, he's making the sauce. Let me tell y'all about that while he's making that. He put in the French onion dip, and then he's just gonna put in a little bit of mustard. Now, we don't have regular mustard, so we're having to use Dijon uh, and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. That's it, that's all the sauce is. And then we also need to get the cheese ready. I don't have any already sliced, so we're just gonna shred some. When people lose their voice, it's like a a really long game of charades and all. You just gotta try to figure out what they're telling you. You can talk a little bit, but. I'm trying to keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Sissy's gonna be shredding the cheese for us. The drawer up under there. Hey, there is some gouda. Get that gouda, Sissy. We're gonna grill the onions out here and we have one pepper for those who wanna add a little spice. Patty on top of some onions. That's the top, Daddy. That's the top. <laughs> the bottom. Then you just scoop it up and flip it over and put it on your plate. And yeah. then you put your top, your sauce on your top. You want to leave it right here for just a little while. I can't say to get those onion flavors. Leave it there for just a little bit so the onion steam soaks up into the bun. Yeah. Okay. Alright, now what you want to do is make sure you kind of bear down on this a little bit and get underneath them onions. Flip it right over. Like that. Can you taste really good? I can taste pretty Okay, good. he can taste good. Taste Can't good. talk good, but he can. My taste drink. <laughs> really, really good. Real good. And now we move on to the upside down Frito pie. All right, y'all, we are back home. I'm gonna go ahead and get supper started real quick. This is a slow cooker meal, but it doesn't take long. It only takes two to three hours on low in the slow cooker, mainly because we cook the ground beef first. So we're gonna cook the ground beef with an onion and drain it. This is the upside down Frito pie. It looks really good. This was a little over two pounds of ground beef. I think like 2.25 pounds. It's definitely starting to feel like the holidays when you're out and about, putting out the turkeys and the pumpkin pies, a little bit of Christmas dashed here and there. Some places Christmas is everywhere. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get out all the stuff that we're gonna need. We're gonna use these two packs, chili seasoning, one can of rotel, one can of tomato sauce, one can of pinto beans. Okay, we're shaking in both packs of chili seasoning. We're gonna put the ground beef mixture in here. So we put in the can of Rotel. Well, I mean, y'all know I have the great value kind, but it's like Rotel. Now we're pouring over the tomato sauce. I think I'm gonna go with a little bit more tomato sauce because I am using a little bit more ground beef than the recipe called for. And even though this was already a little bit, you know, bigger of a can of tomato sauce, I still think I'm gonna add a little bit more. Or do I just wanna add some more diced tomatoes? I think we'll just go with another can of Rotel. I think that'll be fine. I just, I don't want it to be all dried out. I feel like since I used a little bit more ground beef, like I said, even though that is a little bit more sauce, I'm, I'm fearful of dried out meat. So we're gonna put in one more can of Rotel. We're gonna cover it and it's gonna cook on low for two hours. Oh yes, I'm feeling much better about this. Much better. So that's it for now. When the two hours is up, we'll put pinto beans and cheese on top and then just put the lid back on and let it cook for about 10 more minutes to warm up the beans and melt the cheese. And all we'll have to do then is get the other toppings ready. All right, y'all, cook time is up. We're gonna stir this together. I am very glad I put that other can of Rotel in here. Now we're gonna pour over the one can of pinto beans. I did drain them. And then we're gonna top it with some shredded cheddar. You know what, do we need two cans of pinto beans? I think we do. I mean, that's not a lot. We're gonna put one more can of pinto beans in here. Oh yes, that's better. Now the cheese. So now we just cover it again and we're gonna cook it on low for just about 10 minutes. Just to warm up the beans and melt the cheese. Gonna be an overflow. That's we fine. We don't care if it overflows. That's okay. We're gonna keep it real. Mmm. <laughs> I lost my mic. That's a two bowl deal there. Two bowl. And for number seven, Roadhouse hamburger steaks. These are a copycat of the Roadkill hamburger steaks from Texas Roadhouse. Sissy's yes. got the onion ready. I got those things once. There's one I was a little kid. You did when you were a little kid? Mm-hmm. One big boy. I don't think we're gonna need all these mushrooms because not everybody likes them, so we'll just do about half. Mama, look at this. What? Sissy just built it. Yeah, she did. Oh. This cheese is easy to shred. It was kind of soft. It's been sitting out for a minute. <laughs> all right, Manny's got the cheese done. I don't think I've ever even eaten at a Texas Roadhouse before. This Roadkill hamburger steak looks pretty good. So yeah, we'll just call it Roadhouse hamburger steak. Okay, onions are ready. In the same video with the Roadhouse hamburger steaks, we also made a very easy and delicious banana cream pie. So make sure you also go and check this video out because you definitely want to make that pie. So we've got the hamburger steaks on the Blackstone. We just made some hash browns to go with these. We just seasoned those with that Steak King seasoning. Then we cooked our onions and mushrooms. We put those on top of the hamburger steaks. And then we topped that with some Monterey Jack cheese. And that's it. They don't look the best. They look kind of messy. Might be why they call them roadkill, but I promise you, they are great. And now for number eight, Mexican lasagna. This one is probably close to my top five of the favorites. It's wonderful. All right, it's time to start supper now. So I've got a little over two pounds of ground beef in this pan. We're having the Mexican lasagna tonight. All right, so while the ground beef's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and mix up the other mixture in this bowl. So I put in one can 
of Rotel drained. Of course, I was using the great value kind, but it's like Rotel. Now we're gonna put in two teaspoons of chili powder. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Let's stir this ground beef real quick. One and a half teaspoons of ground cumin. A little bit of salt. Just a little bit of garlic powder. About half a teaspoon. And a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Okay, we're gonna mix all this together. Already smelling beautiful. Now we're gonna add sour cream. We're putting one and a half of these 16 ounce containers. So you need 24 ounces total. We're gonna mix all of this together. And then we're gonna drain the two cans of corn, but we're not gonna put the corn in here. It's gonna be a separate layer all by itself. Okay, stir the ground beef, it's almost done. I'm gonna get a nine by 13 casserole dish and spray it and we'll drain the corn. beef is done so we're gonna go ahead and start layering. First we put down just a little bit of the sour cream mixture. Just a little bit to spread over the bottom like we do when we make regular lasagna. We put some of the pasta sauce on the bottom. And now the tortilla shells. Oh I forgot I need some shredded cheddar cheese. Now we put a little more of our sour cream mixture right here. I think this is gonna be really good y'all. Really really good. Now, I'm going to get a different spoon, and we'll just drain this ground beef as we add it in. Okay, okay now we're going to put some of the corn. Next, we put some shredded cheddar. I had a little bit already shredded in the refrigerator. Sissy's getting some more ready for me back there. And then we just repeat these layers until we get to the top. Do you remember that breakfast pizza? Yeah, I remember. That's what it smells like. Smell it. Get down there. <laughs> smells good. It smells like that breakfast pizza. I'll say it one more time. You've been telling That's us that on and off camera for 30 minutes. Mm. Mm. Good. It's got a real Mexican taste. He really likes that one. Y'all, when the eyes get really big, that means it's really good. Show them. <laughs> and now for number nine, we're making cowboy sloppy joes. Now these are kind of like a barbecue sloppy joe, which we've made before, but we've never made them exactly this way. Also in this one, we made a key lime pie that was also wonderful. It's a no-bake toasted coconut key lime pie. Great. We, we like a lot of pies around here. <laughs> like I said, everything's going to be linked down below. So we're starting out with our ground beef and an onion. And yeah, we've never made them exactly this way before, but this one is definitely worth repeating and actually having the recipe because it is great. We add Rotel, which I had never done before, and we use the Kinder's barbecue sauce, and right now their sauces are my favorite, especially the hickory and brown sugar and their honey hot barbecue sauce. Both of those are wonderful. We haven't tried any that we don't like yet. So we're just cooking the ground beef and onion here. When it's done, we're gonna drain it and then we start adding everything in. One can of Rotel, a little bit of chili powder, some crushed red pepper flakes, just a little A1 sauce, ketchup of course, and the barbecue sauce. And I thought that was it, but I decided to throw in a little mustard too. <laughs> we top them with some cheese and supper is ready. Don't forget about that pie for dessert. That's a perfect summertime pie, but you can make it any time.
And last but not least, my personal favorite, the street corn burgers. start by cooking this corn on here a little bit I just want it to get you know kind of dark in some spots just look kind of charred you know kind of like it was grilled but it's black stone Jonah and Sissy have come to smell the, even the black stone just by itself when it starts heating up it smells so good how we looking oh yeah it's happening it's getting good okay I'm just gonna let these things keep going I already have the hamburger patties made I'm gonna go ahead and get out the other ingredients that we're gonna need for the corn salad, and I'm gonna make that first, then we'll cook the burgers. That way this is all ready to go when the hamburger patties get done, and we'll be ready to put it together. All right, for the lime mayo, we need one cup of mayonnaise. So some of this is gonna go with the corn, and some of it is gonna be left to the side just to spread on the burgers. Now we need one clove of garlic. A teaspoon of chili powder. Go ahead and start mixing that together. Now we need the juice from one lime. And these limes are very easy to squeeze. I'm just gonna squeeze this one instead of getting my squeezer. I'll use my built-in squeezers. <laughs> One tablespoon of hot sauce. I just have Texas Pete here. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. That's it for the lime mayo. It smells so good. Okay, we'll go flip the corn and start the burgers. We're just adding the lime mayo to the corn and we can also put some cilantro in here i think i'm going to add a little bit of cilantro but you don't have to that's it we're ready to make some summer corn burgers It's a summer corn burger with pepper jack cheese. Summer it's, corn. It's like a Mexican street corn salad on there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. I like the tang from the corn. Meat is seasoned just right. You know it. I didn't even see. He's acting like guy. I didn't even season the meat. I didn't even put anything on it. That's really good, y'all. I'm not joking with you, that is good. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed seeing our top 10 new favorite ground beef recipes. Now we have lots of other ones, some that were new but didn't make the top 10, and some that are old family favorites in our ground beef recipes playlist. So if you need more ideas, go check that out. I'll have it linked down below. Let us know your family favorite ground beef recipe in the comments below, because your favorite might become our favorite. 